Animated White Paper with Dr. Greg Alexander. The Health Literacy Challenge, Meeting and Beating the High Costs of Low Health Literacy. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Alexander, and I'm Chief Medical Officer here at Health Nets Media, but I'm also a practicing general pediatrician. On top of that, I sit on the Board of Directors for the Ohio Health Information Partnership, as well as the Executive Councils for the Child Health Informatics Center and the Council on Clinical Information Technology at the American Academy of Pediatrics. Across all those areas, from local to national to state level, I've seen the advantages that health information technology can bring to healthcare delivery, but I've also seen how we've really missed the mark in utilizing to its best advantage some of these great new tools that we have for communicating to our patients, for educating them, and for increasing their health literacy. That's what this paper is about. I hope you'll enjoy it, and I hope if you have any questions, you'll reach out to us with uh, some of the contact information you'll find at the end of the video. Thanks for taking time for us here today. Did you know that health literacy is a better predictor of wellness than age, income, race, or education level? And that low health literacy in the U.S. alone costs us more than $236 billion each and every year. So what is health literacy? Health literacy is the degree to which individuals have the capacity to obtain, process, and understand basic health information and health services needed to make appropriate health decisions. The problem is that in the U.S. only 12% of adults are considered to have proficient health literacy and this has remained essentially unchanged for over 40 years. This is a tremendous challenge, leading to higher healthcare system usage, problems understanding treatment courses and taking medication, and shorter life expectancy. Healthcare costs are four times higher for those with low health literacy than for those with adequate or proficient health literacy. Again, low health literacy costs us over $236 billion each and every year. It's a very complex situation, as is healthcare, and healthcare providers often do a poor job simplifying health issues for their patients. We often load them up with excessive paper, pamphlets, handouts, books, etc., that are often dull and disengaging. Tying together this poor understanding and the disengagement leads to reduced health and worsened outcomes. There's a very important distinction between health literacy and general literacy. Low health literacy is not the same as low literacy, and indeed low literacy is not the same as low intelligence. People with low health literacy or low literacy are often capable of understanding very complex information as long as it's presented to them in a way which they can understand. Unfortunately, low health literacy is not limited to the U.S., but is a problem worldwide. People with poor health literacy, though, are often masters at concealing their deficits. They're often very articulate, which helps to disguise their literacy issues even more. Compounding this problem is the fact that clinicians often overestimate the health literacy of their patients. Further, patients are often very reluctant to reveal any lack of understanding to clinicians and clinicians do typically poor or limited follow-up of their clinical education success, most likely due to the fact that most clinicians are very poorly trained to be competent educators. There are a variety of tools that we can use to help educate our patients, including the old standbys of oral communication and print materials. These have been augmented by audio, video, and new media, including the internet and mobile platforms. They're all useful, but we should emphasize those which are most effective. Audio, video, and new media have been shown to have a higher likelihood of repetition. This greatly enhances the likelihood of patient engagement, increases both short and long-term memory retention, and leads to improved long-term outcomes. The delivery method for health education materials varies widely from the personal, oral communication, which typically involves a two-way, you-to-me type of communication, to the more impersonal or solo efforts involved with reading materials. Audio, video, and new media are somewhat a combination of these two, though they can offer some engagement options and some educational tricks which are difficult, if not impossible, using traditional media. For truly effective health education and to advance health literacy, it's important to optimize the educational effect. One-sided or one-way education is much less effective than engaged two-way communications and educational techniques. Certain successful educational techniques have demonstrated their effectiveness, including teach-back, reward and positive reinforcement, social reinforcement, and gamification, which has been shown to have a very powerful impact upon educational opportunities. New media technology maximizes educational engagement potential. Of course, we must provide balance between the quality and quantity of medical information provided and the engageability. 
Print material can provide the most complex medical information, but is typically a very unengaged, one-way form of education. Oral communication works very well as far as engagement, but is limited due to time and resources. Audio, video, and new media provide a great balance between the engagement factor and the medical information which can be provided while allowing easy access and repetition. Regardless of general literacy, new media and audio video tools can still educate. Even if general literacy levels are low, health education can proceed with tools that can overcome obstacles encountered with common forms of communication such as print materials. And when used properly, health literacy tools can help advance general literacy. There is another advantage which audio video and new media allow, which has been greatly underutilized. That is, the power of animation. It has been shown almost since its inception that art in motion or animation is capable of dealing with delicate issues that are difficult to deal with through other media. Many people find certain health-related issues difficult to discuss. Issues such as bodily functions, cancer, end-of-life care, reproductive issues, and other culturally sensitive topics can be handled sensitively through animation in ways that are quite difficult to do with other media. Combine this with the power of gamification which greatly increases both engagement and repetition and we can truly drive health literacy and health education to levels heretofore unimagined. There are many great resources for health literacy, health education, storytelling, gamification, animation, etc. which you can find on the web. I've listed some of them here which we used as resources and I'd like to thank those who provided such information. Health Nuts Media, dedicated to improving health literacy, understanding, and engagement. We make health fun. For more information, write us at literacyquestions at healthnutsmedia.com, visit us on the web at healthnutsmedia.com, or call our CEO, Tim Jones, at 818-802-5222. Thanks for taking time to watch us here today.